My role as a regional agricultural land care facilitator um, in the Northwest Local Land Services area of New South Wales. Um, I'm based um, actually at Moree, but my host um, organisation is um, Northern Slopes Land Care Association. And I share that role with Lana Andrews, who's based in Tamworth. Um, the focus for the role is to engage with, with landholders and to help and support them um, through a whole range of activities, whether it be field days, um, various types of communication, meetings, um, and we really want to focus on a number of key things. Um, the effects of climate change on, on our agricultural businesses. Um, we want to also look at um, market demands, the, the challenge that farmers have from external influences on their farms and their commodities. Then we have provenance, which is understanding um, how customers feel about the products that, that, that our landholders are actually producing to try and understand quality and I guess nutritional value in, in our food that we are growing. And finally benchmarking, which is measuring, either comparing um, themselves against other people, but more importantly, internally looking at comparing what they do on their farm from paddock to paddock, different measures that they can use by soil testing, um, weighing stock, um, doing feed budgets and that sort of thing. The key outcomes that we would like to achieve um, by the by the end of our project, which is 2023, is to make sure that we can actually increase the number of um, landholders and, and community, through community engagement, uh, to support people to increase their capacity, their skills and knowledge to be able to implement um, resilience into their businesses. A primary objective um, through the project is to focus on agricultural production and to ensure that people are supported and equipped to change and to make changes in their business uh, for resilience, but more importantly, uh, to focus more on profit as opposed to production. So the activities that we're involved in um, are with and supporting local land services in our region and also land care activities um, to get grower groups together so that we can actually build capacity within the grower groups and also building partnerships with other organisations um, so that we can use the expertise and not reinvent the wheel with everything that we need to do um, to build resilience in our community and on our farms. It's great to hear how people are putting some of these ideas into practice to improve their productivity and sustainability. We're going to hear from sheep producers Justin and Leroy. Um, when we first bought our farm it was very degraded due to old traditional farming practices, set stocking and things. And um, over the space of the 15 years, we've been sort of slowly re bringing it back to where it should be. And um, inadvertently, we've regenerated it from degradation to covered in pastures and, and tropical grasses and things like that. Um, we've done some deep ripping to basically t remove the hard pan that was left there by um, farming practices. Um, resting country to let it regenerate itself um, through rotational grazing and in the last five or six years we've sort of started to wean our country off chemical inputs so chemical fertilizers and sprays they're not completely removed at this point but we're working towards weaning them completely off um, so most of our inputs now are um, not necessarily organically based but biologically based. Uh, in, a, in this drought uh, it's been a very huge learning curve in uh, building resilience for us, our health, our family, as well as resilience on our farm. Um, the easy, the best thing to do is to get in early, make decisions early uh, for a better outcome um, as the drought continues, which means either destocking early, uh, keeping our ground cover, um, which keeps our resilience, water infiltration for when it does rain, it responds really quickly. A third of our place has been taken from conventional farming country. When we first bought a new block next door, it was wheat stubble, and we drew it. first thing we did was sow it down to tropical grasses. Um, the tropicals are very productive in comparison to cultivation country. Um, they are better than natives, but the resilience of the tropicals, we're not sure how they're going to stand up because natives have been here since forever. Um, we're hoping the practices that we're using to get our tropicals more um, productive once we get um, time and, and money to be able to do so, we're going to apply the same principles to our native grasses and turn them into very productive native grasses. Most native grasses in this part of the world are treated as a second-rate thing. 
um, and people want to plough them out and grow oats. We think that we can actually make our native pastures by increasing our biodiversity and, and, and fixing the soil that they'll become very productive yeah. and more resilient because they are naturally occurring. Um, soil carbon's a good one and an easy one to measure. Um, when we went there, we were, our organic carbon in our soil was 0.7, which is very, very poor. Um, so we're striving to get it up to sort of the, in the area of healthy soils, which I don't know exactly where that is, but if, I know that they've talked around four as a healthy soil. And um, I think we've nearly maybe tripled that in the time we've been doing. So that means yeah, our water infiltration and everything's going to be the spin-off of that. Um, in our, with our livestock, our numbers have just decreased significantly. Uh, two years ago we were carrying um, probably a couple of hundred head of cattle plus our 2,000 ewes uh, from our stud. We run Dorpers, so um, we have a stud end commercial. All the commercial ewes have gone, so we're back to about 800 stud use um, but in the end you said adversity creates opportunity and in the end we'll end up saying five years time our flock will be so much better as if we hadn't gone through this drought. Nick and Alex Anderson, beef producers from near Mullaly, have been using the drier conditions to reassess their business operation. It is through benchmarking that they are able to identify opportunities where they can make improvements. Uh, well, I guess we, we have a few ecological measurements that we do. Um, one of them is soil testing. We do um, annual photos where we have ecological monitoring points and we measure things like ground cover, species diversity, um, perennial versus annual composition. And we also do a lot of feed budgeting, so feed squares, um, working out how many stock days of feed we've got in front of us. And then we do some financial. Obviously do all the ecological benchmarking but in terms of finances we're monitoring the obvious things like the price of cattle in and the price of cattle out but we're also measuring a lot of things like the cost of carry so we're we're trying to really monitor our expenses keep the expenses low which means that there's more there's more profit in in smaller growth rates and things like that rather than chasing massive growth rates we're just chasing profit it's very important in our business average daily gain but again um, we're not necessarily chasing the highest average daily gain we're just chasing something that's profitable so so we basically we measure our kilos of beef per hectare that we can produce. And then if you, when you link that back to the expenses, quite often if you're chasing an extra 0.1 or 0.2 kilo a day for the sake of you know a few kilos of grain here and there for the animals, it actually doesn't add up. Key things that we've learned in terms of resilience would definitely be to work with nature. Don't try and fight it because you'll lose. <laughs> um, you really will. So we're trying to you get much better infiltration rates and, and water, soil water holding capacity and things like that and we're trying to encourage the plants that want to grow rather than trying to enforce ones in there and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing if you try and force plants to grow somewhere where they don't belong you're forever replanting them um, but if you let the things grow that want to grow, great, away they go. For us this drought has been a fantastic opportunity to really learn as much as we can um, and go through our business with a fine tooth comb. Um, we've, we've met some really wonderful people throughout all the courses that we've done over the last two or three years and they have been a fantastic support ne network. You know, they're people we can bounce ideas off or that uh, we can just call and have a chat to about something we're trialling.